Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and thank you to everyone who is doing their part in this time, uh, even if that means staying at home and being bored. That's where we hope to help you as the Fraser Virtual History Museum currently. Uh, so this is available for any families out there looking for just things to talk about or also any adults, whoever. This is great information to share. So I'm standing in front of an American flag from 1864 and it has 36 stars. You can count them 36. Every time a state is admitted into the Union, a star goes on the flag. And if you know anything about the Civil War, you may wonder why there are 36 stars here, knowing that the Confederate States left the Union to start the Confederate States of America. Well, President Lincoln would not allow those states to be removed. He believed in the strength of the Union and that America would remain as it always had been. So this is the flag that was created just after Nevada was brought into America as an official state. So it includes all of the Confederate seceding states. Now I want to show you another flag. This is an original flag of the Confederate States of America. And this particular flag has one of the most interesting and fascinating stories of any object in our collection, I believe. The original Confederate flag is actually designed by a man who was buried here in Louisville. He was a portrait artist. He actually painted, he even painted Abraham Lincoln's portrait. His name was Nicola Marshall, and he is buried in Cave Hill. So he designed this original flag. This one has 11 stars for the original 11 seceding states. Um, you also see it has three stripes. But here was the problem. In battle, you would often follow a flag, and then the confusion of smoke and kapows and cannons and all that sort of stuff, not to mention maybe there wasn't a wind blowing, it was decided, or it was realized, that this flag and the American flag that I showed you might look a little too similar. So this was not the flag used in the battlefield for long. This flag that we have in our collection was actually in possession of and was the camp flag of a General Gustavus Smith, who was from Georgetown, Kentucky. It later wound up in a home in Richmond, Virginia. Now, as the Union was closing in, laying siege to Richmond, which was the Confederate capital, there was a man from Kentucky living there. He was living in somebody's house. Um, and that house had this flag. That man was John C. Breckinridge, who was from Kentucky. He was the youngest vice president in American history, and he was actually running against Abraham Lincoln in the election. In fact, there were so many people running in the election that they actually split the vote, which may have vaulted Abraham Lincoln into the presidency. So they knew each other very well. Breckinridge left the Union to join the Confederacy and actually served as Secretary of War. And it was while he was in Richmond and the Union was coming in that he sat in, with this flag in his bedroom. Now on April 3rd, 1865, the Union soldiers had the city surrounded and they gave special permission to John Breckinridge's wife, Mary Breckinridge, to leave and go back to Kentucky. Now they had orders not to allow certain things to go with people including Confederate objects. So Mary Breckinridge actually took this flag off of the wall or off of the flagpole that it had been on, actually wrapped it around her waist like a petticoat, and then wore her big dress over the top of it. So she wore it basically as underwear and carried that through the siege lines and went all the way back to Kentucky where it was preserved. That was April 3rd, and just a few days later, the war would come to an end when Lee surrenders to Grant. A few days after that, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, and John Breckinridge, who knew him well, said, the South has lost its best friend. He actually fled the country, which is a story in and of itself. Maybe sometime we'll be able to tell you that. 